ربش راہلی صدری و اسلی امری و اہل الک تتم لسانی افقا کولی اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم لیٹ اسٹارٹ دا بریف ایکسپلینیشن آف دا ٹوینٹی سکس پارا ود دا ڈاٹ والا سبحان و تعالیٰ ٹو اوپن آر ہارٹس ٹو دا میسج آف دا قرآن آمین لیٹس ٹیک اے لک ایٹ دا فلو چارٹ آف مائکرو اسٹرکچر آف سورہ اللہ کاف وچ واز ریویلڈ ان دا ٹینتھ ایئر آف پرافٹ ہوڈ ان مکہ دا سینٹرل تھیم آف دا سورہ از ٹو بلیو ان دا ہولی قرآن اینڈ ٹو لرن اے لیسن فرام دا اینڈ آف دا پیپل آف آد اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ سیز ان ورس تھرٹین شورلی دوز ہو سے آر لارڈ از اللہ اینڈ دین ریمین اسٹیٹ فاسٹ دے ول ہیو نو فیئر فار دیم نور ول دے گریو دس ورس ٹیلز اس دیٹ جسٹ ایڈمٹنگ دیٹ آر لارڈ از اللہ از ناٹ انف وی ہیو ٹو فالو آر ورڈس ود ایکشنس اینڈ دوز ایکشنس آر ٹو ڈو ایوری تھنگ ان لائن ود دا کمانڈس آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ اینڈ ریسٹنگ آل ٹیمپٹیشنس ان ورس ففٹین وی آر کمانڈیڈ ٹو آنر آر پیرنٹس اسپیشلی آر مدرس وائی بیکاز آف دا سیکریفائز شی میکس فار اس وی کین نیور امیجن دا فزیکل اینڈ اموشنل اسٹریس فیس بائی آر مدر انٹل وی آر سیلس گو تھرو دا سیم پروسیس اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ orders us to be good to our parents and to make dua for them. We are taught to say, My Lord, inspire me to always be thankful for your favors which you bless me and my parents with and to do good deeds that please you and instill righteousness in my offspring. I truly repent to you and I truly submit to your will. Verse 21 to 25 is the story of the people of Aad who challenged their prophet to bring the punishment to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a fierce wind carrying a painful punishment to them and they were all destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives their example to the people of Makkah in verse 26 and says, We had established them in a way we had not established you. We gave them hearing, sight and hearts, yet their hearing, sight and hearts were of no use to them. Since they denied God's revelations, they were overwhelmed by the punishment they had mocked. The Aad were much more powerful than the people of Makkah. Their physiques, wealth, power and dwellings were all superior to them. And yet, they were no match for the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In verses 29 till 32, we are told about the group of jinn who listened to the Quran being recited and believed in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And mention, O Muhammad, when we directed to you a few of the jinn listening to the Quran, and when they attended it, they said, Listen attentively. And when it was concluded, they went back to their people as warners. How did they listen to the Quran? Attentively. How long did it take them to believe? Days? Months? Years? No, they believed immediately. When did they start spreading its message? As soon as they went back to their people. Let us all take lessons from the jinns. Verse 35, the last verse of this surah is a message to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to bear the opposition of the disbelievers with patience. This life and its problems seem endless now, but on the day of judgment, the life spent on this earth will seem no more than an hour in a single day. Surah Muhammad Let's take a look at the flow chart of microstructure of Surah Muhammad which was revealed in the second year of Hijra in Medina. The central theme of this surah is to do jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your wealth and your own selves so that you can be successful in this world and the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 7, O believers, if you stand up for Allah, He will help you and make your steps firm. This is how we can become steadfast in our religion by helping the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might be wondering, how How can I help Allah's deen? Think about your talents. What are you good at? Look at your resources. What can you give? You will find ways if you are sincere in your intention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 12, Surely, Allah will admit those who believe and do good into the gardens under which rivers flow. As for the disbelievers, they will enjoy themselves and feed like cattle, but the fire will be their home. The people whose life does not have a higher purpose are like cattle in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as an animal eats and does not think about where the food it eats comes from, who has created it, and what are the rights of the creator, so are those people also eating and having no higher values or ideals beyond eating. Then Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask a question in verse 24. Do they then not reflect on the Quran or are there locks on their hearts? The word used here to reflect on the Quran, tadabbur. What is tadabbur? It means that you try to find full meaning of every word, every verse and every surah of the Quran. How can we do tadabbur when we don't even know what it means? We just read the Quran for sawab, right? 
We just complete one Quran after the other without thinking about a single verse. What answer will we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if He asks us why we never made an effort to learn about His message to us? The last verse of this surah, verse 38, is a call to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Here you are being invited to donate a little in the cause of Allah. Still, some of you withhold, and whoever does so, it is only to their own loss, for Allah is self-sufficient, whereas you stand in need of Him. If you still turn away, He will replace you with another people, and they will not be like you. Surah Al-Fat Let's take a look at the flowchart of microstructure of Surah Al-Fat, which was revealed in the 6th Hijri after the peace treaty of Hudaybiyah. The central subject of this surah is the good news given to the Muslims after the peace treaty of Hudaybiyah. The surah opens with the good news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely, we have granted you an open victory. When after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, this good news of the victory was announced, the people wondered as to how the treaty could be called a victory. The Muslims had gone to Makkah to perform Umrah, but according to the treaty, they were not allowed to do so. They had been allowed to come back the following year and stay in Makkah for only three days. Also, according to the treaty, there would be a truce between both parties for 10 years. If a Muslim flees to Medina from Quraysh without the permission of his guardian, he will be sent back to the Quraysh, and whoever comes to the Quraysh from the Muslims will not be sent back. The treaty also stated that both parties could have agreements with other tribes if they wished. Now, on the face of it, it looked like the Quraysh had the better deal. But within a few years, the prediction of the Quran came true, and the Muslims realized that this treaty was indeed a victory for them. Verse 10 is a reference to the oath of allegiance called Better is One. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, those who pledge allegiance to you, O Muhammad, they are actually pledging allegiance to Allah. The hand of Allah is over their hands. This pledge was taken by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his companions at Hudaybiyah at the rumor that Usman ta'ala had been killed at Makkah. If the news of Usman ta'ala's martyr proved to be true, they would settle the matter with the Quraysh there and then, even if they were to die in the fight. Verses 11 to 17 are directed at the hypocrites who had given lame excuses and had not joined the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has exposed their true thoughts in these verses and has also talked about those who had genuine excuses to stay behind, like the blind, lame, and the sick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in verse 18 that He is pleased with the believers who gave the pledge to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under the tree. This was a really tough time for the Muslims as they were dressed in their ihrams for Umrah and were not at all ready for battle. They had proved their obedience to their leader, regardless of the dangers, and for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored them with this certificate of his pleasure in the Quran for all Muslims to read. Verse 29 honors Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions by highlighting their qualities. We are told that they are forceful against the disbelievers and are merciful to the believers. They bow down and prostrate in prayers. They seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their faces bear the marks of prostration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for them forgiveness and a great reward. And that promise is also for all those who follow the guidance of the companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people. Amen. Surah Hujrat. Let's take a look at the flowchart of microstructure of Surah Al Hujrat, which was revealed in Medina in the 9th Hijri. The central subject of this surah is to, is to avoid a hypocrisy and fulfill our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This surah was revealed after the conquest of Makkah, which was the beginning of a new era for the Muslims. It was a time when a large number of people were entering Islam and there was a need to teach the Muslims the manners worthy of a true believer. The surah deals with the etiquettes and norms to be observed in the Muslim community. Verse number one deals with the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said, Believers, do not advance before Allah and His Messenger and fear Allah. Verily, Allah Allah is all hearing, all knowing. This means that there can be no law above the Quran and Sunnah. The obedience of Quran and Sunnah is a must and it is unconditional. Verses 2 till 5 are about the rights of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O believers, do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet, nor speak loudly to him as if you do to one another, or your deeds will become void while you are unaware. We all claim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But few of us know the etiquettes of loving him. We are not to put ourselves before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, either in actions or in words. Next, the mutual rights of the Muslims have been described. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 6, O believers, if an evildoer brings you any news, verify it, so you do not harm people unknowingly, becoming regretful for what you have done. 
Remember to investigate whenever you receive any news, especially if the person bringing the news is of a doubtful character. Don't forward and share every message that you receive. Verify it so it does not harm innocent people. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us in verse 9 to create peace between Muslim if a disagreement arises among them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not approve that the other Muslims should just sit and watch the clash. Instead, all the believers should become concerned and should do whatever they can to bring about peace between the parties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 11, O believers, do not let some men ridicule others. They may be better than them. Nor let some women ridicule other women. They may be better than them. Do not defame one another, nor call each other by offensive nicknames. We take the commands in this verse so lightly, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us in the Quran not to make fun of others, not to taunt or call others by offensive nicknames. Islam is against racism, body shaming and so many other insults that are considered normal in our society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this behavior evil and includes the people who does them as the zalimun. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further instructs us in verse number 12. O believers, Avoid many suspicions, for indeed some suspicions are sinful, and do not spy, nor backbite one another. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of their dead brother? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to avoid negative assumptions, for some may be a sin. When you find a fault in others, conceal it and advise in private. Wouldn't we want others to do the same for us? Do not spy on others or backbite. Hazrat Abu Raira Rizillah Ta'ala reported, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Do you know who are bankrupt? They said, The one without money or goods is bankrupt. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily, the bankrupt of my nation are those who come on the day of resurrection with prayers, fasting and charity, but also with insults, slander, consuming wealth, shedding blood and beating others. The oppressed will each be given from his good deeds. If his good deeds run out before justice is fulfilled, then their sins will be cast upon him and he will be thrown into the hellfire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 13, O humanity, indeed we created you from a male and a female and made you into peoples and tribes so that you may get to know each other. Surely the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous among you. Allah is truly all-knowing, all-aware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that our origin is the same. No race is superior than the other. Isn't this why we ridicule others? Because we think that we are better than them. The only trait that makes one believer better than the other is his level of taqwa which is the fear and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. Surah Qaf. Let's take a look at the flowchart of microstructure of Surah Qaf, which was revealed in the fifth year of prophethood in Makkah. The central subject of this surah is a call to believe in the life after death and the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 16 to 18, Indeed, it is we who created mankind and fully know what their souls whisper to them and we are closer to them than their jugular vein. As the two recording angels one sitting to the right and the other to the left note everything not a word does a person utter without having a vigilant observer ready to write it down remember that we are not free to do whatever we wish for each word each response each action is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is also being noted down by the two angels sitting to our right and left be very alert as we are being observed and recorded 24 7 then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the day of judgment and says and every soul will come with it a driver and a witness on the day of resurrection every man will arise from his grave on the sounding of the trumpet the two angels will come forward and take him into their custody one of them will drive him to the divine court and the other will be carrying his record there every person will be able to see clearly what his actions were in the dunya the evildoers will be thrown into the hellfire and paradise will be brought near to the righteous may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who will be so honored that they will not even have to walk to Jannah and Jannah will be brought to them. Ameen. This brings us to the question I am going to ask myself today. The question is, how am I going to stop myself from gossiping and backbiting? Inshallah, we will meet again tomorrow with the next para. Allah Hafiz.